In this video, I'm going to cover the super exciting new stock history function, which allows you to get historical price data for stocks, bonds, funds, crypto, and foreign currency. Now be sure to watch right to the end where I demonstrate some ways you can use it that you won't find in the Excel documentation. Now I should point out that the stock history function is currently only available to Microsoft 365 users on the beta channel. And even then, it's only been rolled out to a random 50% of beta channel users, so you may not see it yet. Now, before we start, it's important to know that the price data is provided by Refinitiv and you require a connection to the internet to get the data. Let's dive into an example and we'll check out the syntax. The first argument is the stock. Now this is the ticker symbol recognized by the stock or currency exchanges and we need to wrap it in double quotes. So I want to find the prices for Borel and their ticker is BLD. You can prefix the ticker symbol with the market and a colon if you want to return the prices from a specific exchange. For example, I want the prices to come from the Australian Stock Exchange. So that's XASX and then I need the colon. Now there's a link to a complete list of the available exchanges in the Excel file for this video that you can download from the video description. Next is the start date. This is the earliest date for which data is retrieved. Dates can be entered in double quotes. So I can enter 1 July 2019. Now it will respect your regional settings. So if your dates are day, month, year, you can enter them in that format. If your dates are month, day, year, then go ahead with that format. You can also reference a cell that contains a date. So I could just reference this cell here, or you can use a formula like today, and we'll look at that later. Now the end date is optional. This is the latest date for which data will be retrieved, and the default is today. However, data is only available after markets close. So the data will only be up to yesterday or the last day the markets were open. I'm going to reference this cell here. Now it's not 30 June yet, so it's only going to return me data up to yesterday. The interval is optional. Here we can specify whether we want the data daily, which is the default, weekly or monthly. I'm going to go with monthly, so I'll tab to enter that. Next, we choose whether we want headers. Zero for no headers. One will show column headers and two will show the instrument which is in this case BLD and the headers. I just want column headers, so we'll go with one. Now the next arguments allow you to specify which columns or properties you want returned. The default is to return date and close. So I'm going to go with that for this example and we'll look at the other options later. So I'm going to delete that comma and close parentheses on stock history. Now we'll see the new busy error momentarily while we wait for Excel to retrieve the data. And then the formula spills the results because it's a dynamic array. Notice the dates returned are all the first of the month because I've specified monthly intervals. Now by default, the data is sorted in ascending date order, but if you prefer it sorted in descending order, simply wrap your formula in the sort function. I want to sort by column one and I want it in descending order. So it's minus one, close parentheses, and now my data is sorted in descending order, which is more appropriate for stock prices. Now a common way to visualize stock data is in a chart. So let's insert a line chart and I'll move it over closer. Now the stock history function also plays nice with the stock data type. On the stock list sheet, I've got a list of different stocks, one of which is also based in London Stock Exchange. So I'm going to convert these to the stock data type. On the data tab, I want stocks. And it's converted everything, but it's not sure about the Royal Bank of Scotland. So it's opened the data selector pane, and all I need to do is choose it from this list. Now I don't want the New York Stock Exchange, and I don't want any of these. I want the London Stock Exchange, so we'll show more results. And there is their London Stock Exchange, RBS. So I'm going to select that one. It's correctly converted it to a stock data type. So now I can reference this list in a data validation list. So up here, I'm going to go to the data tab and then data validation. We want a list and the source is my stocks list here. Click OK. 
and I'm just going to break a cardinal rule and merge and center so that the data validation list has more room. So now I can choose a stock from the list and all I need to do is reference that list in my formula. So I'll choose the cell containing my data validation list, press enter. It's going away and it's getting the stock prices for Austal. I can now choose a different stock from this list and it updates accordingly. So now that I have this data validation list containing the data types, I can extract information about the stock by referencing it and then using the dot operator. So for example, I might want to find out what currency this is. So I can choose that from the list and press enter. So now when I select, for example, Royal Bank of Scotland, which is on the London Stock Exchange, it's going to tell me that the currency is GBP. If you want to specify the columns that are returned, you can use the properties argument in the stock history function. And let's say I want to insert a stock chart. Here I want to again reference this cell. It contains a data validation list with my stock symbol. The start date. Well, I want to show the last 12 months. So I'm going to use the end of month function with today to find data for the last 11 months. So I'm going to go back 11 months, close parentheses on end of month. I'm going to leave the end date blank so that it defaults to today. I want the data at monthly intervals and I want one for column headers. Now for the stock chart, I need the columns in a specific order, starting with date, so zero for date. Then I need volume, which is five, open, which is two, high, which is three, low, which is four, and finally close, which is one. So close parentheses. Now I should point out that you don't need to specify all the columns. You simply enter the ones that you want. I just happen to want all of them. So press enter and my formula spills. So now I can insert the chart on the insert tab. Up here, I want this one. Volume, open, high, low, close. Let's make it a bit bigger. Now you can spend some time formatting the chart and you'll see I've done that in the file that you can download for this lesson. I'm gonna leave it for now because I want to focus on the stock history function, not on chart formatting. Of course, because this is all tied to this data validation list, as I choose a different stock, everything updates accordingly. Now the stock history function isn't limited to stocks. It also works with bonds and funds like ETFs, as well as crypto and foreign currency exchange rates. So let's look at currency pairs. Here I've got a list of currency pairs, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now I could simply reference them in the cells like this, but I'm going to format them in the stocks data type. And that's just going to allow me to get further information from them. I'll insert a data validation list that references them so that we can toggle through the different currency pairs and click OK. So let's choose one. We'll just go US dollar to GBP. Now I want to see exchange rates for the last 30 days and I want headers. So stock history. The stock is this one up here in the data validation list. The start date is today minus 30 days. I'm going to skip the end date because I want it up to today. I want daily rates and I want headers. So we'll close parentheses. Now I'll wrap it in the sort function so that I have the most recent at the top. Now notice when I choose a different currency pair up here, the currency symbol in the second column is going to update accordingly. So if we choose euros, now it shows euros. If I choose pounds to Australian dollars, we get dollars. Now this is brand new functionality. It's called formatted number values or FNV for short. And the stock history function is the first function to spill cell formats. Now technically it's not applying formatting. If you look at the home tab, you can see it's still formatted as general, even though it appears to be an accounting format. 
The function provides a format hint when the cell is formatted as general. So the cells must be formatted as general before you enter the stock history formula in order for this FNV to flow through. Excel can then temporarily format the cell with the accounting format. Now it also uses formatted number values for the date cells. And we can see there, they're still formatted as general, even though they have dates in them. Let's look at the cryptocurrencies. Now you'll notice there's a lot more data for the cryptocurrencies, and that's because they trade every day of the week, whereas traditional currencies only trade Monday to Friday or when the exchanges are open. Now a common way to visualize currency exchange rates is in a chart. So let's go ahead and I'm going to insert just a column chart. Let's pop it over here. So you can see there that the weekends are skipped. We don't have the weekend data in our spilled results, but because my chart is using a date axis, it shows the missing weekend dates. If I choose one of the cryptocurrencies, you can see that no dates are skipped. That is, they trade every day of the week. Now, remember that the stock history function can only return data from the previous day. However, because I've formatted my currency pairs as stock data types, I can get the intraday rate by simply referencing it and then either choosing it from the list or typing it in. So there's my current rate. And this is the last day the exchange was open. Now I'm in Australia, so I'm some 17 hours ahead of the US and therefore it appears that I've skipped a day. But at some point overnight, the stock history function will catch up to me and there'll only be one day gap. And we can also do things like grab the 52 week high or low and various other data. But this isn't a lesson about data types. I'm just adding them because I think it's useful information. But let's crack on because my next example demonstrates a way to use stock history that's not found in the documentation. And I've not seen anyone else use it like this. So stay tuned for another world first. Here I have a list of currency pairs across the columns. And I want to return the open, close, high and low for the date in this cell here. Now remember my dates are formatted day, month, year. So stock history. What stock? Well, I want all of these stocks. I'm going to select the column headers. The start date, well, it's this date here. I'm going to skip the end date because I'm only getting data return for one date anyway. The interval I can also skip. Again, it's not relevant. I don't want any headers because I've already got the currency pairs in my header. So I'm going to enter zero for the headers. And for the properties, I want the open, close, high and low. But I want them to spill down the rows rather than across the columns. So I'm going to put them in an array. And I want two, which is the open. And then a semicolon because I want it to spill down the rows. One for the close, three for high and four for low. Close my array, close stock history and press enter. And you'll see it spills the results across the columns and down the rows. You can see the different currency symbols for each of the currency pairs. Now, just like values in any other cell, I can also add conditional formatting. So for example, I can specify some formatting that shows me the direction of the open and close change. Now, unfortunately, I have to format each currency pair individually, but you get the idea. In cell B14, you can see I've got a spilled array of dates that I generated using the sequence function, starting at the 12th of June. Now, this is the date serial number for the 12th of June, and I'm stepping back one day at a time. So I can use stock history to find the prices for these stocks for these dates. Now, because I'm referencing a spilled array, the spilled range operator, the pound sign has automatically been inserted. If this list of dates updates or expands, the stock history function will automatically pick them up. The end date I'm going to skip and the interval I want daily. That's the default. So I'll skip that. I don't want any headers. I've already got the currency pairs in my header. Now here I only want the closing price for each date. So I'm going to enter one for the closing price, close parentheses, 
and the results will spill. Now if I update the sequence formula, for example, instead of five rows of dates, I want seven. For a moment, it's busy. This needs formatting in a date format. Remember, the sequence function doesn't have the FNV functionality, so it can't automatically apply the date format. But the most important thing is my stock history function has automatically picked up those new dates because I'm referencing the spilled range operator for the sequence function. Also notice stock history has returned prices for Saturday the 6th and Sunday the 7th of June, which are the same prices as Friday the 8th of June for the foreign currencies. So in this formula, stock history is simply returning the prices for the previous close rather than skipping those dates. With the exception of the cryptocurrencies, of course, they trade on weekends. OK, last example. Here I want to include a sparkline that shows the trend of rates over time. Again, I've used sequence to spill a range of dates starting on the 12th of June and stepping back one day at a time. I'm going to put my sparklines in column C. So here I want my stock history to return this list of stocks based on this list of dates. Again, it's put in the spilled range operator. I'm going to skip the end date and the interval can simply be the default. So I'll skip that. I don't want any headers. So zero for headers and I want the close, which is one. So close parentheses, press enter. There's my data for each currency pair going across the rows. So I can select these cells here, insert sparkline. The data range is this data here and it's already chosen the location range because I selected the cells and I'll click OK. And now I have a sparkline referencing the stock history data. Well, that wraps up the stock history function. You can download the Excel file for this lesson, including all the examples covered in this video from the link here. I hope you're excited about the stock history function. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.